Imagine if every book we read had the same exact story, just different names and characters. Boring, right? Well, the same goes for case studies. Like readers, companies are always looking for stories that are unique and get them excited. They don't just want to see a generic template that lacks a personality and creativity. But here's the thing. Once you find a template that is flexible and versatile, it will allow you to make your work stand out and impress your interviewer with minimum effort. And let me tell you, after years of experience, I finally developed my own framework that I'm so excited to finally be sharing uh, with you today. We're gonna use my favorite tool of all time, which is of course uh, Figma. <laughs> we will explore every single step together from presenting yourself to highlighting the impact you've made. So whether you're a seasoned designer or just starting out, uh, this resource can really help you present your work to the recruiters and of course uh, make a lasting impression. Now, I'd love to show you my actual work at some point, uh, but uh, for now there is this teeny tiny thing uh, called a non-disclosure agreement that doesn't allow me to showcase my projects. I know, not so great, but just for you guys, I've prepared some examples that capture the essence of my projects without revealing any confidential information. So hope it's still uh, helpful for you. And with that said, let's jump right into Figma. But before we jump into the details, I just want to say once again that while this framework is designed to help you in creating a coherent case studies, it's really important to customize it to suit your project's narrative. And I've seen so many case study templates that I've never been able to use for my projects because they're too rigid or unrealistic if you work in tech. So rather than forcing you into a predefined structure, this template is meant to be a starting point that you can customize and tailor for your specific projects. That's it, now let's get started. <laughs> Alright, let's dive into the portfolio presentation slides first. We have a total of six slides, uh, beginning with a cover where you can add your name, role, email and your Twitter or uh, LinkedIn account uh, as well so that people can easily find you. On a second slide, I want to discuss what I'm going to cover in today's portfolio presentation, which includes uh, experiences, side projects, uh, career highlights, and of course, um, our case studies. Let's start off from the experience section where I detail my professional background and various roles I had so far. I like to include my side projects because uh, I think uh, they add value to my work and demonstrate that uh, first I'm passionate about design and also I like to expand my knowledge outside of work um, and give back to the design community. So I like to include that as well. Achievements can be like uh, you want a design context or I don't know, you get your work featured on the Dribbble website. My career highlights, I think uh, they are more like uh, getting a promotion, uh, completing uh, impactful uh, projects or reaching an important milestone. And lastly, I want to make sure to incorporate my case studies and provide direct links uh, to the final slides in Figma. Now let's take a walkthrough of the Figma file. In the left side panel, you will find the introduction slides and dedicated pages for each project. I've implemented a system here to indicate the status of each task, complete, outstanding or not started. On the components page, you will find the reusable elements for each page. I've kept it very streamlined with just four variants and I found this system working really well for me. Actually, all the slides are based on these four screens. Here you have the absolute freedom to add more components or pages if you want to, or use the one I've provided. Basically, the main goal behind implementing this system is to create a well-organized and consistent framework that makes it easy for you to find what you're looking for and create new pages with literally no effort. All right, I like to start my projects by setting up some context on what we will be covering today because I want my viewers to get to know the company and um, the product domain even before we dive into the problem space. Then I talk about how the team was structured, what roles uh, were involved uh, and the responsibilities as well. On the next three slides I want to talk about the why 
why we should commit to this project, uh, why it will benefit uh, both uh, business uh, and customers. As you can see in this example, I start by emphasizing a specific issue related to the metrics and sharing user feedback uh, that we have collected. And I think these slides are really important as they uncover the user pain points that I want to include on the next uh, slides. So after I talk about uh, why working on this project will benefit the users, I want to talk about why it's important to the business as well. And by showcasing how the project uh, aligns uh, with the business goals uh, and objectives, we can really demonstrate how it will contribute to the overall um, success of the company. On the next slide I want to talk about the overarching goal by defining what success means and this really helps align all my team members and stakeholders towards a common goal. Now let's get to the strategic part. On this slide I describe my approach starting from jamming ideas with my team to the handover process. On this one here, you can add a screenshot of the GEM session or work the viewer through the findings without going into much details if you know, you're conscious of time. Now moving on to the next slide, I defined the milestones uh, for this project. I've got a couple of examples um, to give you an idea of how we can be structured so you can choose the one that works best for you. Also, it's completely up to you to choose whether you wanna use these templates or you just wanna add screenshots from the actual docs at least this is how I do it. And now we come to what I believe is the most important slide of all. Metrics are not only important for the success of a project, but in case studies, they can also demonstrate your ability to use data-driven insights to inform decision-making and optimize results. Oh my gosh, it's so hot in here and I'm so sweating. Anyway, let's go on. Now, this is finally where we take action on our strategy and turn ideas into design solutions. Here, I usually structure my files in this way. So I create a slide for each of my key user flows with a link to the actual Figma file. Personally, from here, I like to open my Figma files first and take the viewer through my messy files. And I think this is great for two reasons. One, it provides an authentic overview of how your design process has evolved throughout the process and two viewers are just more uh, engaged and excited to see your creative process uh, from start to finish instead of a pixel perfect creation and I also like to showcase uh, the before and after of each feature on a separate figma slides uh, just to highlight the most important improvements we made and once the prototypes are ready, the next step is finally to test our ideas. So the research questions serve as a guide to ensure we gather the necessary insights during our testing process, while the research findings are the outcomes of the research session and help us identify areas of improvement. Research plans can be really complex, but as you can see here, I'm only capturing two key parts, which are the research plan and the research insights. All right, next uh, I want to outline my handover process. This is actually the one I've used in my latest case study. And I like to end talking about the impact we've made and whether or not we've hit our metric goals. Lastly, I want to share the lessons learned from the project and how we plan to leverage those uh, insights in future projects. And I think this part is really important because it really showcases our commitment to growth and our ability to adapt based on the knowledge gained throughout the project. That's all for today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to check them out. Don't forget to download the template from the link in the description down below. And if you find it useful, I would appreciate a thumbs up and uh, you can subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Ciao!